It is Monday, March 29. Welcome to CGN News. The first frontline medical staff in Cuba have received the island's experimental vaccine, Soberena 2, meaning Sovereignty 2. The vaccine candidate, which is still officially in Phase 3 trials, represents Cuba's best hope of lifting the lockdown on the capital Havana and beginning to claw back some of the lost economy, especially in the tourism sector. Even though Soberena is yet to be fully certified as an official vaccine, the authorities are so confident in its effectiveness, the process of giving it to 150,000 Cuban doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers is now fully underway. Cuba has a strong record in vaccine development, having produced its own meningitis B vaccine in the late 1980s. The numbers of infections and deaths from COVID-19 are much lower in Cuba than elsewhere in the world, but the lockdown has caused serious economic hardship. The Guyana government says it is making strides towards removing barriers affecting trade within the CARICOM single market economy, the CSME. The CSME allows for the free movement of goods, services, labor, people, capital, and technology across the 15-member regional integration movement. Last December, President Dr. Mohamed Ifran Ali expressed concerns at the barriers to free trade within the region and formed a committee to help address the issue. An official at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Robert Prasad, said some of the areas being looked at include the exportation of poultry with a focus on Trinidad and Tobago. Additionally, the committee is looking at enhancing sanitary protocols for export and tapping into the pharmaceutical market. British Airways will operate two special commercial flights between Kingston's Norman Manley International Airport and London Gatwick, April 1 and 8, the airline's country manager, Diane Corey, has confirmed. This is the fourth month that the UK carrier has operated flights to London that had been originally scheduled. Corey said the flights have helped to maintain cargo links between the two countries. However, British High Commissioner to Jamaica, Asif Ahmad, said businesses have not made sufficient use of the cargo capacity. Ahmad noted that the UK continues to prohibit international travel for tourism, but its vaccination strategy and protocols are working, so he expects a gradual relaxation of travel rules. Last December, Jamaica banned all flights out of the UK owing to the more infectious COVID-19 variant in Britain. Director of Tourism Donovan White has confirmed Jamaica has thrown its hat in the ring to become the next Caribbean cruise ship home port when cruise shipping begins in the region come June. The move comes less than a week after the Bahamas was announced as the cruise home port for Crystal Cruises and Royal Caribbean and St. Martin for Celebrity Cruises. Last Tuesday, it was disclosed that Vision of the Seas would begin cruises out of Bermuda, while the British Virgin Islands announced that it would be opening a cruise port of call. Jamaica is now trying to get into the action, which has come about as a result of the United States cruise shipping home ports still being put on hold as a result of the pandemic. This has resulted in cruise lines trying to find new alternatives to home porting such as those in the Caribbean. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, says the elevated volcano tectonic earthquakes that began on Tuesday at La Soufrière has stopped. Nemo said the earthquake stopped on Friday, and since then, the only seismic activity being recorded is small low-frequency events associated with the growth of the dome. Last week, Director of Nemo, Michelle Forbes, said that people close to the volcano should be prepared to evacuate at short notice. Geologist Professor Richard Robertson endorsed Forbes' comments, saying that the country had been fortunate this time in that unlike 1979 when the volcano last erupted, the current eruption began effusively. Meanwhile, the alert level remains at orange, the third highest on the four-level scale, with red being the highest. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has warned that the racist lie that perpetuated slavery and the slave trade must end. 
speaking on the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade, Gutierrez said although the slave trade ended more than 200 years ago, the ideas of white supremacy still exists. The meeting honored the memory of the millions of people of African descent who suffered under the brutal system of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. Gutierrez said the trade created and sustained a global system of exploitation for more than 400 years. The UN chief called for renewed commitments to a world where all can live in peace with dignity and opportunity. The trial of Derek Chauvin, the white American policeman accused of killing George Floyd in May last year, is due to begin today. Chauvin was recorded by passers-by in Minneapolis kneeling on the neck of Floyd for more than nine minutes. The incident sparked protests in the U.S. and across the world against police brutality and racism. Chauvin, 45, is one of four officers involved to stand trial. He's facing the most serious charges of the four, including second-degree murder, which carries a sentence of up to 40 years in prison. Chauvin, who was fired from the police, has pleaded not guilty. Family and friends of George Floyd held a vigil and prayer service in Minneapolis ahead of the trial. The stern of a huge container ship that has been wedged across the Suez Canal for almost a week has been freed from the shoreline. The Ever Given was refloated in early Monday morning, according to the Suez Canal Authority. The giant 399-meter-long evergreen operated vessel will have an initial damage assessment, but sources say the ship is fully mobile. The ship has been blocking one of the world's busiest trade routes, the vital waterway linking Europe with Asia. Some companies were forced to reroute ships, but there remains long tailbacks of more than 300 vessels. The Suez Canal Authority says traffic will resume today on a first-arrive, first-transit basis, but livestock vessels will get priority. An estimated $9.6 billion worth of goods have been held up each day. State officials have launched a digital pass New Yorkers can download to show proof of vaccination or negative COVID-19 tests. The Excelsior Pass will be accepted at major entertainment venues like Madison Square Garden and Albany's Times Union Center. The app is similar to a mobile airline boarding pass and uses a secure QR code that can be stored in a smartphone or printed out. Officials say the technology doesn't store or track private health data within the app. Quote, New Yorkers have proven they can follow public health guidance to beat back COVID, and the Excelsior Pass is another tool to fight the virus while allowing more sectors to reopen safely, end quote, Governor Andrew Cuomo said in a statement. Cuomo announced Saturday that more than 8.5 million total vaccine doses have been administered across the state, including more than 1 million doses over the past week. And finally, Venezuela hit back at Facebook over digital totalitarianism after President Nicolas Maduro's account was frozen for 30 days. A Facebook spokesman said on Saturday that the social media giant was freezing the account, quote, due to repeated violation of our rules, end quote. Facebook has faced criticism over the spread of virus-related false information on its network and has said it is ramping up efforts to fight back. Maduro's page is only frozen, meaning it will remain visible, but he will not be able to add new posts, the AFP reports. This comes after Facebook said it had removed a video from Maduro's page, quote, for violating our policies against misinformation about COVID-19 that is likely to put people at risk for harm, end quote. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching.